Hello, I'm Emily Hamstra, Assistant Director for the Network of the National Library of Medicine, Region 5. Welcome to this session, Health Reference, a short introduction to best practices and resources. Have you ever gotten a health question at the reference desk? Requests for health information can be challenging, especially with our growing awareness that providing reliable health information is more important than ever. This session will provide best practices for health reference and will recommend free and reliable online health information resources. Before I start the presentation, I want to tell you about where I work, the Network of the National Library of Medicine Region 5, or the NNLM. The NNLM is the outreach program of the National Library of Medicine. We're organized regionally and we provide grant funding, free training opportunities, and more. You can read more about our work on our website, nnlm.gov. The image on the right shows the relationship between the NNLM, the National Library of Medicine, and the National Institutes of Health. Hawaii is in NNLM Region 5, along with Alaska, California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and the U.S. territories and freely associated states of the Pacific. Now let's get into the presentation. There are two parts of this presentation. In part one, I'll cover some best practices for health reference interviews. Throughout the presentation, I'm going to be providing practical ideas to put into place in your library. It is inevitable that when I offer some of these ideas, you might think, this would be impossible in my library. So when you have that thought, please consider how you might instead handle the situation in your library. In many cases, there are more than one way to respond. In part two, I'm going to briefly cover some free resources for reliable online health information. And those are going to include some age-specific resources, easy-to-read resources in English, and resources in languages other than English. There's been a renewed sense of urgency around the importance of health reference during the pandemic. With rampant health information available online, it's really easy for any of us to get sucked into health misinformation. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the U.S. Surgeon General's report confronting health misinformation and the accompanying community toolkit for addressing health misinformation. So let's discuss some best practices for helping our communities access reliable, evidence-based health information. Health questions come with many opportunities and many challenges. It seems that no matter how prepared you are, patrons will inevitably ask a question for information that you've never searched for before. A patron might tell you something very personal during the interaction, or they might or you might feel a strong emotion during the interaction. It's important to keep personal information confidential, stay neutral, listen closely, and remain compassionate. Keep the focus of the the interaction on the patron's question and the information that they need in order to learn more about the topic. It's very common to feel intimidated by the topic or the question that the patron is asking and to worry about providing the wrong information. It's my hope that this presentation will help you feel more confident about providing health reference. Keep in mind that health issues can be stressful. Someone might feel angry, they might feel sad or confused, and this can impact how they're looking for, how they're asking for, and how they're processing information. If someone's upset, their thinking might be really fixed and inflexible, and they might be wishing for a quick answer or a solution to a complex question. The information that the person is looking for might differ by their age, by their gender, their literacy level, their economic background, their culture, or their language. And how you as library staff respond to the patron can help them feel comfortable in the moment and allow them the space to return if they haven't already. 
if they allow them the space to return if they aren't ready to get all of the information that they need out of one interaction. One simple step is to provide your library as a welcoming and safe space. When a patron asks a question that's potentially sensitive, you can lower your voice so it's not as easy for others nearby to overhear the conversation. And if the patron seems uncomfortable speaking about their information need, you might consider taking them to an area of the library where you can talk without being overheard. Verbal and nonverbal communication norms differ by culture and community and individual. But that said, here are some very general tips to keep in mind. During the interaction, stay aware of your posture and your tone and your facial expressions. Keep your expressions as neutral as possible and listen closely to the patron. If the patron's asking a question that they clearly feel embarrassed to ask, remember to keep your facial expressions neutral, just listen closely and make eye contact. Basically, know your community and read the room accordingly. If a patron tells you that they've received a serious diagnosis, it's absolutely acceptable to express your empathy. However, you need to be very clear about what your professional boundaries are. You provide information. You can't provide the patient with medical advice or emotional support. Know when to refer a patron to their healthcare team or a social support group. If it's possible, slow the interaction down. It's okay to need a minute to process what they've said before you begin looking for information. So you might say something like, wow, I need a moment to think about where to begin to look for information on that. I know that slowing an interaction down is easier said than done. If your library is busy, you might consider setting the patron up on a computer, getting them started, and then checking in with them to ask about what they found and what further questions they have. This one's important. Be, sh be sure to sh not share your anecdotal stories to demonstrate that you understand. You may feel like this builds rapport with the patron, but it can often convey the wrong message. Remember that each person is different, each situation is different, and it's important to respect that difference. Your role in the library is to provide information, not advice. During the reference interview, ask open-ended questions. So for example, you might ask, what kind of diabetes information are you looking for? Are you looking for symptoms of, prevention, living with, nutrition, or can you tell me more about this topic? Or similarly, uh, what do you already know about this? And those two questions, tell me more about this topic or what do you already know about this, can be really helpful if the patron is looking for something that you've never searched for before. And it's okay to tell the patron that you need them to provide you with more information because you're not familiar with the topic. You might also ask something along the lines of, what is it that you want to know about leukemia? Or, okay, so you're looking for information about stomach problems. Can you give me an example of something more specific? And also, where have you looked for information so far so that I don't retrace the steps that you've already taken? It can be helpful to know the purpose of the information. However, that might feel really personal and it might feel like it's a, too personal for the situation. So don't feel like you need to ask that if it doesn't feel right. There are many categories of health information. So some of those might include treatment, prevention, causes, and asking about what category of health information a patron needs can help you narrow your search. So for example, to repeat from the previous slide, um, you might say something like, okay, so you're looking for information about diabetes. 
what type of information would be helpful for you? Information about treatment, information about prevention or living with, or something else. Remember that health questions can be very complex. Um, so how much information do they need? Are they um, a fourth grader writing a report for school or are they um, a doctor looking for a medical study? How much detail is needed? Consider the language or the format that might be best. Um, some resources offer information in languages other than English. Um, some offer audio and visual or video. And it's, it's very common that patrons have heard that health information online can't be trusted, so they want a book. Or they want a book because they want to take it home and read it, um, pick it up, put it down. And in that case, if you don't have reliable books available on the topic, be honest and tell the patron that you don't have books on that topic, but there is some reliable health information online. And you'd be happy to help them locate it. Um, you might even print it for the patrons so they can take it home with them. I like to think that some of the best health information resources we have are online and some of the worst health information resources that we have online are available online. Um, you can assure the patron that it's your job to help them find the good stuff online. When you're gathering information, always verify that you have the correct terms and spellings. This can make a huge difference. So for example, does the patron need information about hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism? Verify that you have the correct one as you're searching. Always provide information from reliable sources. And I'm gonna give you a few examples of those in a few minutes. Um, when you're reviewing health information of any type, you might tell the patron as you're looking through the information why you trust it or why you don't. And that can help them evaluate information when they're searching on their own later. If you can't provide reliable information on a topic, don't provide information. Refer the patient to their healthcare provider, um, or you can also refer them to a local hospital or health sciences library for further assistance with their question. It's okay to refer. And again, as you're working with the patron, make sure that you're both evaluating the information. You might use a website like Trust It or Trash It, which asks three simple questions for evaluating health information. So those three questions are who said it, when did they say it, and how do they know? When delivering information to the patron, really stay focused on the patron's information need and your role in the interaction. You are an expert at finding information. You can't help the patron understand their health or um, you can't diagnose or prescribe, give advice. Also, be careful to not let your own life experience impact the interaction. Stay focused on the patron and their need. And again, you can always refer the patron to their healthcare provider um, for really complex questions or if they have questions about understanding the information that you're finding together. You might find that some health reference questions come to you over the phone. Um, or virtually, anonymously. And again, treat these questions like you would approach any question that you receive in person. Uh, if you're on the phone, be sure to read directly from the source and mention the source that you're using. Uh, virtual reference is nice because you can link directly to the source and send a patron directly to a reliable source. So now I wanna show you very briefly a few resources to help you find reliable health information online. So I'm gonna cover Medline Plus, kidshealth.gov, and the CDC's information in languages other than English. I'm gonna do a really speedy demonstration of each of these. 
So I want to start here with Medline Plus. Medline Plus is, um, you can get to it at medlineplus.gov. And this is a resource from the National Library of Medicine. Medline Plus compiles reliable and easy to understand health information. And this is a great place to start looking for health information. I really like these health topics pages because they collect information from a variety of different sources and collate, collate it together in one article. So I'm just gonna select skin cancer here and it gives a summary of the topic and then information linked out to other websites. So you'll notice here this, this information is from the National Cancer Institute. This link here is from the American Academy of Family Physicians. So everything in Medline Plus is um, vetted by experts in the field, and it's collected resources from federal agencies, nonprofit organizations, research organizations, and more. Medline Plus is available in both Spanish and English, so you'll see it defaults to English, but you can change it to Spanish over here. And then there is some information available in languages other than Spanish and English. And the fastest way to get to that information is at the bottom of the homepage, there's a link to health information in multiple languages. There's also a link here to easy to read health information. And this is health information that's written in very plain language, so at a slightly lower level than some of the other information that you'll find on the site. And that can be really handy if, um, if the patron is having a hard time making sense of the topic or some of the, the words used in another article, you might take a look at that information there. Um, if you're not finding what you need in this health information in multiple languages area, um, but you're looking for information that's in a language other than English or Spanish. The CDC has a page of resources um, that you might take a look at as well. Okay, and then the last resource that I want to quickly show you is uh, kidshealth.org. And this is, um, this is a site that has great information that's aimed at kids about their health and also teens. Um, and uh, I don't know why it looks like that. Let me reload the page. Um, there's also information here for parents. And the majority of the articles on this site are available in English and Spanish. There is some information here too that's available in, um, in video form. So especially in the kid and teen areas, um, there's some great videos here about uh, mental health and it's kids talking about mental health for other kids. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's, this is a great resource, um, especially for kids and teens. So that's kidshealth.org. Okay. And if you're interested in diving into any of this deeper, I really encourage you to check out some of the classes that are provided by the network of the National Library of Medicine. The class Introduction to Health Reference is a four hour course that you can take at any time, and it expands on the content that I presented in this presentation. You might also consider getting your consumer health information specialization. The NNLM provides the classes needed to obtain the credential and the funding needed to pay for the credential. And you can learn more about that on our website. Um, I'm gonna provide a link to these slides so you can um, get all of the links that I shared in the slides and then some additional information as well. And if you're watching this video, this 
presentation live, I'm happy to take questions now. If you're not watching it live, I encourage you to reach out to me with your questions via my email address, ehamstra, H-A-M-S-T-R-A, at uw.edu. Thank you so much.